Y'all better get y'all mamas away from the kitchen when you making this one because you won't want to slap your mama this instant pot pot roast, garlic mashed potatoes, garlic green beans, and honey butter cornbread. Hey, it's so good. We're going to go ahead and get started with this pot roast. And I have a two pound chuck roast right here. A lot of fat on it is what you're going to want. I have two stalks of fresh celery as well as about six carrots. They're a little bit on the small side. I also have four medium-sized rustic potatoes, but any potato of your choice would work. I'm also going to be using two teaspoons of minced garlic, one red onion, two tablespoons of butter, and a little over a fourth a cup of dry red wine. Now let's start seasoning that meat. I'm using a teaspoon of Lowry's, a teaspoon of beef Maggie, a teaspoon and a half of garlic powder, as well as a teaspoon and a half of onion powder, a teaspoon of dried thyme, a teaspoon of garlic pepper seasoning. This is a pre-mixed blend, and I'm gonna stir this together. I'm also gonna go in with half a teaspoon of dried rosemary. Now add some olive oil to your chuck roast and rub that baby down, okay? And then we gonna season all sides, all right? Don't just be seasoning the top, all right? Patting it in and then flipping it over and seasoning the bottom. No, honey, we gotta do more than that, all right? We gotta get up in there and we got to season the cracks and we got to season the corners. You see how I'm opening that little fat pocket? Shake it on in, okay? Seasoning can get up in there, all right? You gonna see me flip it and turn it to the side. Yep, mm-hmm, the sides need flavor. We eat that part, okay. And then I'm also gonna make sure that I'm seasoning the fat cap. Now the fat cap, the best part, because that's the part where the flavor lies, okay. So get it up in there. Now for these potatoes, since I'm using a rustic potato, I am going to peel them, but if you're using the thin skin potatoes, this is not necessary. I'm gonna cut off any bad parts and then I am going to cut them into large-ish pieces. I'm cutting them into like halves and thirds, but you could also do fourths. It really depends on like how much space you have in your Instant Pot because they have to be small enough to fit into the packet. And you'll see what I mean in the upcoming clip when I put them in the foil packet. Now for these carrots, I'm actually only going to cut the largest ones. You can peel them if you would like. I didn't peel all of them, but those I'm actually going to leave whole. They're a good size already. However, the other ones I'm gonna take and then I'm gonna cut them in just like some halves. That's good enough because they're gonna be cooking for quite a while. So if you cut them too small, they're actually gonna get mushy. I would prefer that you cook them and then you cut them into the size you want after they are cooked. Now for my celery, I'm going to prep this by putting this into large chunks as well. This will essentially dissolve into the gravy because of how long it's going to be cooked. So there's really no reason to take the time to make this super small. Now for my onion, all right. Now my onion as well, I am going to just put that into some large chunks. Just like the celery, it will basically dissolve under pressure. So there's really no need to make it super small. I actually found that if I make them really small, it actually kind of becomes gummy. So I do like keeping it large. I'm just gonna go in and separate this and our veggie prep is good. Now, I am going to wrap the carrots in some foil. This is going to keep it out of the gravy, but cooking. So just wrap it up tightly in a tight foil pack. I'm also gonna do the same thing with the potatoes. However, the potatoes are really big. So you need to maneuver them in a way so that the pack is the right size to fit in your Instant Pot. As you can see, I'm kind of stacking them on top of each other. You're gonna need to do that so that it can fit well into the Instant Pot. And I'm gonna close that up as well. And of course, this is going in our mashed potatoes. So really, the potatoes will not be overcooked even though we're gonna cook it in the Instant Pot for a long time. Now, I'm gonna put my Instant Pot on saute and I'm going to stick a little bit of oil in there. This is just a little bit of olive oil and we're gonna begin 
searing our meat. You have to get a great sear on your meat because you wanna lock in those juices and just balloon the flavors in those spices. And hey, don't even worry about that little brown stuff on the bottom, that doesn't matter, that's all flavor. Now I brown mine for about three to five minutes on each side. It really depends on how hot your saute function gets. But as you can see, I'm getting some good color and I'm also flipping it to the sides. Sides got flavor too. Okay, so flip them good. Guys, if y'all think I'm doing a good job, please go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe and let me know your favorite way to make your chuckle roast. Now I'm gonna go in with some butter and my celery and my onions and I'm using my spoon to carefully scrape up that fondant that is at the bottom of my Instant Pot. Guys, this is total flavor. Don't be one of those people that goes and rinses their pot out. I don't know why people do that, but we need that flavor. Now to help deglaze the pan, I'm also going to put in about two teaspoons of that W sauce, okay? Y'all know, don't nobody know how to say that right, okay? And I'm gonna use it to pop that fondant off. Now in goes my garlic, and I'm just gonna lightly toast it. Y'all know garlic can burn, so don't even be cooking it longer than one minute, okay? Now goes in the red wine. This red wine adds so much flavor. Remember, this is a dry red wine. Please do not use a sweet red wine. It won't work for this recipe. Now I'm putting in the little trivet that came with my Instant Pot, and I'm gonna do this whole sort of stacking operation, okay? So first the trivet, then the roast beef, then the potatoes. Now, as you can see, this is why I need to make sure the potatoes weren't too high. You see they're not going over the lip now? Perfect. And then I'm gonna put my carrots right on top and I'm going to add about a cup and a half of beef broth. You could add more, but I find that you don't need too much because I really want that flavor to be concentrated. I am going to pressure cook this for about 20 minutes a pound and then do a natural pressure release. So this is two pounds, so I'm gonna do about 40 minutes. Now if you want that falling off the bone tender chuck roast, then I suggest you go about 25 minutes a pound, okay? Now, uh, these are my green beans. They've already been cleaned and I'm just adding them to some boiling water and just quickly cooking them for about three minutes. Adding a little butter, a little salt, a little pepper, a little garlic, you know, keeping it simple but delicious. All right, and our green beans are done. They're just lightly cooked. And now that my Instant Pot has natural press release for 25 minutes, I'm just gonna, you know, knock it open and let it go the rest of the way. And voila, guys. Okay, let's see what treasures we have in here. Now, first, I'm gonna take out my veggies and I'm going to place them to the side. Next, we have our beautiful pot roast and I'm going to actually cut this up on the side. Now, we are gonna go in and we are gonna put a little work on this gravy, okay? I'm gonna add in a teaspoon of beef bouillon powder as well as a teaspoon of garlic powder and I'm just gonna salt and pepper to taste. And this is two teaspoons of cornstarch that I have mixed with water and that's gonna thicken up my gravy. Now, I did not go heavy with the salt in the beginning of this recipe on purpose because I like to reduce my gravy on the saute function for a while. And if you add too much salt, it just really spoils the roast beef in my opinion. It makes it way too salty, so you can always adjust it here. Now I'm adding in that delicious chopped up roast beef. As I said, mine is tender, but it's not falling apart. And if you like it more tender, just cook it a little bit longer in the Instant Pot. Now, I know all of you guys wanna know what's going on in these packets, okay? So if you look inside, you will see our carrots are definitely cooked, but they are not mushy. If you had cooked them with the beef, they definitely would be mushy, but they still have some texture to them. Now these potatoes, these potatoes are nice and cooked and they are soft as well. And we're gonna begin to prep them for these garlic mashed potatoes. So I'm gonna take them piping hot out of the packet with some tongs, cause I, your girl don't wanna burn herself, okay? And 
I'm going to start working on these taters. I'm going to add about two tablespoons of butter and I'm going to start pounding them with my spoon. Really, I should have had my potato masher, but y'all, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. Okay, it was trying to hide from me now. So I had to go in and, you know, get a little arm worked out. Okay, work that thing. All right, with the spoon. And then I went in with some heavy cream and a little bit of sour cream. And of course, I'm gonna go in with salt and pepper. Now really for these tots, you just got to work it, you know, add a little bit here, add a little bit there until you get the flavor that you want. Okay, so you're gonna see me go in with some whole milk, some more sour cream, and I'm just gonna work that flavor. Now, I know you guys are wondering, how are we gonna get the roasted garlic flavor if you y'all we ain't roast no garlic now i didn't have a whole hour or whatever to roast garlic so i'm doing a little cheat here and i am using the roasted garlic better than bouillon to get that roasted garlic flavor and i'm adding about two teaspoons of that and y'all it really does add a nice garlicky flavor okay you know i didn't really believe it until i tried it so give it a go of course, if you do want to roast your own garlic, then just take a bulb of garlic, cut off the top and the bottom, and wrap it in some foil with a little olive oil and roast it until it's tender. Um, you can whiz it in the food processor to make it smooth, and then I'm going to add in my carrots and give that a, di a mix into this delicious gravy now my honey butter cornbread recipe I'll link that that is already on my channel look at this delicious meal guys i pray you enjoy this with your friends and family and that you guys will remember that the love of god is the best and the most precious love of all i pray you enjoy this meal and i thank you so much for joining me today in Kamira's kitchen goodbye guys and bless you